This week on the Delaware Way, the new president of the Chamber of Commerce is here and responds to a survey that says Delaware is losing ground when it comes to business. This is the Delaware Way. Welcome to the Delaware Way. I'm Larry Menti. The Chamber of Commerce for Delaware has a new president, and he's here with us. Mike Quaranta is the president of the Delaware State Chamber of Commerce. Sir, thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, just so people get to know who you are, tell us about yourself. Sure. Thank you, um, and thanks for having me on. Sure. Um, so I've been in and around Delaware for a couple of decades, but uh, more aggressively in, uh, since 2003, when I became Mike Castle's chief of staff. Now, I was in Washington, but I was out here every uh, second or third week for a day or two at a time. And then I moved here full time um, in 2010, and then have been here since. Presently serve on the Newcastle City Council, um, and I live in the uh, historic section of Newcastle. Now, since you were Mike Castle's chief of staff, is there a connection to Washington, and is that important? I spent uh, 35 years of my career in Washington, working both in the United States Senate, the House of Representatives, for different corporations and associations and uh, public affairs firms. Um, and then, yeah, so I think it's the, the translation of all those work experiences which brought me to the chamber. How, how does that connection uh, with the federal government, I would assume, and you've probably met with millions of lobbyists from different industries, how does that help you in this job? Well, it's it's kind of indirect. It's really just the experience of all, a collection of all those different type jobs that I had along the way, Larry. Um, the, the state chamber is really focused on state government and, and, and dealing with the governor and the legislature, the agencies and departments, uh, up and down in the different counties, uh, the municipalities around the state. And there's very little nexus to the federal government. Um, there are things that we do work on with the federal delegation, the two senators, the House member, um, that are uh, small business administration focused, Department of Commerce and the Economic Development Administration. And there, there is some nexus, but I'd say that 95% of our focus is truly state government related. It seems like every time you talk about business in Delaware, the conversation always begins with DuPont and what happened to, to DuPont in the merger and, and the effect that had in Delaware. Is that overplayed or is it re really had an effect that still is hurting the state? I think it's it's clearly had an effect, sure. But I think everybody's now thinking about what are we doing over the next five or ten years, and you know, the the focus really is a lot of medium and smaller sized businesses. I mean, as much as um, everyone focuses on, you know, we we mentioned earlier about Amazon and and the potential of you know an Amazon location somewhere in the region. But uh, the, you know, there's a lot of singles as opposed to home runs, and so I think you know our focus has been how do we get back and and and, and advance manufacturing and real jobs in, in real industries that um, with medium and smaller sized businesses but are really great pathways to success for Delaware citizens. It's interesting when when after the merger happened and, and people weren't sure exactly what was going to happen with DuPont. It didn't turn out as bad as everybody thought it might because they still kept some operations here. But there was real concern as to what the future was going to be. And I had a couple of people tell me which was fascinating to me, that you have to remember the talent pool that's been left behind. And in that talent pool are entrepreneurs. And that there's been several cases across the country where this type of thing has happened and companies have sprung up because of the talent that was left behind. Is that happening in Delaware? I think it's happening to some extent, sure, um, because there were some incredibly innovative people that worked for the DuPont company and, and, and is now its successors. And I think uh, that will live on. But I, you know, we have an awful lot of, if you look at demographically, you look at the number of retirees that are moving to Delaware. In eight years, we've gone from ranked 13th to now 7th with the percentage of retirees in our state amongst the 50 states. Um, there are huge amounts of retirements in like the aviation mechanical cohort. And so as we become a much more mobile um, uh, world and people are hopping on airplanes like my grandparents used to hop on a city bus, we have a great absence of mechanical engineers who are, and, and people who work on airplanes who are going to be retiring in the next five to ten years. And so there are great opportunities in different industries um, with the retirement of the baby boom generation. And that's going to pre pre present really great opportunities for Deltac and other kinds of uh, schools to, to train the workforce of tomorrow. What, what is the state of business in Delaware right now? How are we doing? 
I think it's quite robust. I think that we've got to do a couple things, you know, a couple things really, uh, we got to do a couple things better. And that is, you know, when I, when I started with uh, Congressman Castle, he said, Mike, our greatest strength is our size. We're small. Uh, our greatest weakness is our size. And so we have to be nimble if we're going to be small, and we are small. So if we lose our ability to make decisions in, with administrative regulatory policy in any kind of a timely and prompt way, we really lose a competitive edge. So Larry, I think one of the things that we're laser focused on is how we, how we get state policymakers to move decisions in a much more expeditious manner. Nobody wants to put public health or public safety at risk, but we have to be nimble, we have to be quick, and we've got to make decisions in a, in a much better way, in a faster way than our than the surrounding jurisdictions. Now let's talk about the specifics of that because there are some prime examples. I I, I remember when Camores was talking about leaving, and I talked to a lot of the players in in many of the states, and there was rumors for a while it was going to go to Jersey, and there was rumors it was going to go to Pennsylvania, it ended up staying. But at the time, I was told over and over again, we have a difficult time competing with those states. We can't offer the incentives. We can't offer the tax cuts. Those other states can offer in Delaware. Is that true? And if it's true, how, for instance, were we able to keep Camores? So it's in part true, but I think one of the other things that we offer is a quality of life and, and, and a value that is really hard to beat. Um, no knock on our friends from New Jersey, but it's a very expensive place to live. That's fascinating. I know that when it comes to small businesses and when they're in national rankings, Delaware has fallen a little bit. And I want to talk about that when we continue our conversation. We'll take a quick break, and I want to talk about these national surveys that have dropped Delaware in their rankings. Maybe you can talk about the reasons for that and how we may be able to fix it when we continue our conversation with Mike Quaranta, the president of the Delaware State Chamber of Commerce, when the Delaware Way continues right after this.